It's Monday, so that means it's time for a new episode of the Joust About Careers podcast, where you can learn about careers from the people who are actually in the trenches every day. I'm your host, Brian Brock, and I'm a career advisor and English teacher at Van Buren High School who wants to see all people make good career and life decisions. My guest today is Sarah Benson, a general surgery resident with Trinity Health. Sarah shares about life as a surgery resident, how she almost decided to not become a doctor but is glad she persevered, how her life isn't quite what is seen on Grey's Anatomy and other television shows, how struggle can be good, and much more. I hope that what Sarah shares today will help all of you make better career decisions and have fulfilling career journeys. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Joust About Careers podcast, and today we are lucky to have with us 2013 Van Buren graduate Sarah Benson, who is a general surgery resident, uh, having gone to medical school and on her way to being a a doctor. Uh, So we're going to hear about her story and what it took to get to where she is today. So Sarah, thank you very much for uh, being willing to sit down and share your story. And I'd like to start by just asking about the life of a general surgery resident. What do you do right now? Yeah, so as a general surgery resident, I'd say I do very little sleeping (laughs) and I spend a lot of time at the hospital. (laughs) Interesting. So is it an eight-hour day, a 12-hour day, a 16-hour day? Is it up and down depending on what's happening and what? do you do when you're there? So my program, we take call. So that means that one to two times a week, I work a 28 hour shift. Um, In between that, my shifts are about 12 to 14 hours long, just depending on the workload. I get here at like five o'clock. I go home at five or six um, at night. And if I'm on call, it starts at five in the morning and ends at about 8 a.m. the next day. So long shifts here. For the most part, I'm gathering all the information about my patients on the service that I'm covering for the day. I'm writing the notes. We round as a team on all the patients, and then we take care of the floor work, um, get patients to the OR. Depending on the service I'm on, I get to go to the OR and operate. Um, yeah, or, or I'm mainly on the floor if it's in the critical care unit. Um, so it's just a little bit of everything. Okay. So when you say round as a team, uh, Mm -hmm. can you explain what that means? Yeah, so I'm currently first year. So most teams consist of maybe a first year, third year, and a fifth year resident. And then we round with our attending surgeon. So our boss, essentially, we see all the patients. And so that means what we mean by round is we go around to see all the patients. We talk about their vitals. We talk about how they're doing and what our plans are for them for the day. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So when you were in high school, did you foresee yourself being where you are today? Uh, and if so, I guess, what did you do to make sure that happened? Or is this completely different from what you had anticipated? Yeah, well, my first two years of high school, I thought I was going to be a sports reporter. Um, I thought it'd be an awesome career for me as an athlete. But then I took chemistry and I took physics and I took bio too and realized that I actually had a big love for science. And so actually in your class, our letter to ourselves 10 years out, I wrote to myself as a general surgery resident. Hmm. So I guess, yeah, I, I dreamt about it in high school and I've made it happen since. Uh, just a lot of hard work and staying focused and not letting um, any hurdles stay in my way too long. Okay. And were you a hurdler in high school or were you a sprinter in track? I was a sprinter in okay. high school, but my college coach turned me into a hurdler. Okay, so, yeah, not letting those hurdles hold you back. That That's mm-hmm. appropriate for a track mm-hmm. athlete. So, you did go to Hillsdale College to mm-hmm. attend school, ran track. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience, and, you know, what did you major in? Was that the only thing that you could have majored in to end up where you are? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I went to Hillsdale College. I was a biochemistry major. It was a great combo of of biology and chemistry, and uh, it's a great pre-med major because it 
has all the pre-med classes within the major, which is why I chose it. But a lot of people choose biology, chemistry, kinesiology. You really can major in whatever you want to go to medical school as long as you get the prerequisite classes in. So I chose biochemistry just because it piqued my interest the most, and it was the most time efficient major. Having a track career as well to focus on, I didn't want to get myself in too deep with studying too many things and not be able to balance it all. Right. And you ran track all four years? So I stayed for five years. Uh, Due to injury, I had an extra season, so I prolonged my career and stayed for a fifth year. Okay. Okay. Very cool. So graduate from Hillsdale, on to medical school. What does it look like getting into medical school and where did you go and what was your experience? Yeah, so um, most people, either their junior year of college or their senior year of college, they apply to medical school. I did so my senior year just because I had that extra fifth year and I did my research for um, my thesis my junior year instead. Um, But getting accepted to medical school is typically rolling admission. And so I knew in October of my fifth year that I was going to go to Toledo Um, I personally chose an in-state school just because um, people go into so much significant debt in medical school. It just makes the most sense to choose an in-state school where the tuition is lower. And so I chose Toledo. It was an incredible medical school to go to. um, And it was close to home, which was so helpful for the rigorous hours in medical school. And medical school is four years? Medical school is another four years on top of it. Mm -hmm. Typically, it's two years of book work and then two years of clinical experience. Okay. So now as a general surgery resident, you are no longer a student at the University of Toledo. And you talked about there being like a first year residence, third year, fifth year. How long is residency and... At what point do you get to go out on your own and and do things? Yeah, so your fourth year of medical school, you start applying to residencies. There's a big date in March. It's called the match. And so it's like March 15th or March 18th every year. Every single medical student in the country finds out where they match. So I matched at Trinity Health in Ann Arbor. So our program here is five years long. So those five years that I... The fifth years I'm talking about, they're almost on their way out. Other general surgery residencies are seven years. They have two years of research combined in them. We call those more of like the academic programs for people who are interested in going to like the Ohio State University Medical Center or University of Michigan. My program is more of a hybrid program. It's very hands-on from day one. So we just have five years, no research required. And then at the end of five years, you can choose to go on further into your studies essentially and do a fellowship. Uh, There's like colorectal surgery, breast surgery, trauma surgery, um, cardiothoracic surgery, all different fellowships that you can choose, or you can choose to just go out and practice as a general surgeon. So really, I mean, by the end of this residency, you're going to be approximately, uh, what, 13, 14 years in of education? Yeah, I'll be 13. Okay. 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, again, if you wanted to become even more specialized, you could go another four or five years. Um, So you're looking at, yeah, 17, 18, 19 years potentially to do that. But obviously, we need Mm -hmm. that because someone who's doing something that's highly specialized, we need that person to know what he or she is doing. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, that you, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, most yeah. fellowships coming out of general surgery are a year or two, which is okay. not so you don't have an additional four to five years on top of it. Since, like you said, we're already you know 14 years in by the end of it, right. it would be a shame to have another four to five. <laughs> to <go>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, with general surgery, um, you said that you know occasionally you get to be in uh operations and so forth, uh, is can you operate or will you be able to operate on almost anything or will you still have a little bit of a specialty even if you don't do a fellowship? How does that work? Yeah, so what you do during your general surgery residency 
is that you spend time in general surgery, of course, which is like breast surgery, thyroids, um, hernias, uh, taking out appendixes and gallbladders, but you also do, you spend many months on colorectal, vascular, you spend time um, in the critical care and trauma, ICUs on the trauma services. So by the end of residency, even if you decide to be a general surgeon, you still have experience in all the different fields. Um, your scope of practice isn't the same as say like a colorectal surgeon's practice would be, but you're trained in all of those specialties. Okay. Well, looking ahead to the end of your residency, uh, do you see yourself going on for that fellowship? Do you see yourself working in a hospital? Do you see yourself starting a business? Uh, do you have any sense of where you might go? Yeah, I think I want to stay as a small town general surgeon. I want to do a little bit of everything so far. Um, I've enjoyed every single specialty that I've rotated on. And so I want to be able to do what I want in my practice and not feel like I'm only going to do hernias or gallbladders like general surgeons do in um, larger hospital settings. But I also don't think I want to like subspecialize into something. I just want to stay with a broad scope and be able to take care of like small town community really well. Okay, that sounds awesome. So if someone's interested, you know, they've heard all of this and say, yes, I'm still wanting to uh, get all this education, get these experiences. I want to positively impact people by you know, potentially saving their lives with mm -hmm. surgery and so forth. Uh, what, what do you think beyond the knowledge of the required time, what else do people need to recognize before they take that leap? I think something I wish someone would have told me back when I was in high school, not saying it would have changed my route at all, but there are so many different ways you can impact people in the medical setting and so many different areas of practice within the medical setting that are interesting and um, fast paced and, you know, that are so important when it comes to patient care that I wasn't aware about, like respiratory therapy and um, occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, you can be a case manager and like really get in the nitty gritty about people's lives and what it looks like when they discharge from the hospital, making sure they have a good home life. Uh, just there are so many cool people in the hospital. Um, so if you want to be in the hospital or you want to be involved in medicine, but you don't necessarily want to spend 15 years of your life getting there, there are so many other things you can do, including like physician's assistants and nurse practitioners, just there's a whole team of people in the hospital. And so time is huge. You have to just accept that you're going to get that amount of time of your life up if you want to be a doctor. Um, so if you're not willing to do it, there are so many other things you could do to still be involved. That is great advice. Obviously, being a general surgeon isn't easy. Uh, based on the experiences you've had so far, what's maybe the most challenging aspect of that career? Yeah, so um, I'd say I'm pretty hands-on. Like my dad loves to work on cars. He loves to build things. And so I grew up, um, you know, just working with him and building things. And so I thought that that would be the easy part of residency that I'd catch on very quickly and that a surgery would come naturally, should I say, um, which I was so, so wrong, but um, it's very complex. There are so many things to learn every single day. And it terrifies me that, you know, you have five years to learn it. It almost feels like it's not enough time. Interesting. So, you know, at this point, have you been the person to make the incision and all of that, or are you still mm -hmm. in the watching mode? <laughs> Yeah, I have 90 cases where I've been able to be the first assist in the case, which means um, I'm pre oping the patient, you know, getting them ready to go to the operating room. I get to go back. I'm making the incision. Um, it's usually one-on-one -on -one with my boss, the attending surgeon, and he walks me through the case, but um, I'm the one throwing in the sutures. He tells me if I'm doing it right, if I'm doing it wrong, and of course, corrects me as I go. Um, but yes, like, that's been very surprising, but as an intern, a first year, I've been able to do quite a bit. Right. Sounds really interesting, but my stomach could never <laughs> handle <laughs> doing that. So I'm glad there are people like you that can handle all of that. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things 
most people watching this probably what comes to mind when they think surgery is Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> so how 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 similar or how realistic is Grey's Anatomy uh, compared to your life? So it's so funny you say that because I was watching Grey's Anatomy in high school when I made this decision and I don't want to be that person, but um, I totally <laughs> was influenced by Grey's Anatomy. Um, I'd say it's not very similar, but there are some some things that really hit your core as an intern that they go through, such as like how tired they are, how fatigued they are, um, when they talk about, you know, should I eat or should I sleep or should I shower? Maybe I should eat in the shower, you know, <laughs> or just go to sleep. Like that's kind of how, how we all feel on a day-to-day -day basis that um, it's crazy, cool. We see cool things every single day, but it is an exhausting career as well. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Mm -hmm. So when you think about what's been most rewarding for you so far, uh, is there anything that sticks out? Yeah, I'd say um, my first month I spent in the surgical ICU, I had a patient who was there for almost the entire month. And so I was, it's kind of rare in surgery. And I was able to build a really incredible relationship with the patient and his wife. Um, and so that was just so rewarding to me is to see him come in as a very critically ill patient and then be able to leave like a month later and be back on his feet. And, um, you know, just, just to see like his family's whole journey through that process and to see them on the other side. Right. That would be very, very cool. Mm -hmm. So as you think about everything you've learned, uh, since you've graduated from high school about careers, about life, uh, is there anything that you look back and say, I wish I had known that when I was in high school? I think what I wish I would have known is that you, uh, so how's a good way to put this? Um, you can't expect the right things to be easy. I would almost expect them to be hard and to know that they're hard because if it means enough to you, you have to put enough effort in to get there. Um, and that if you're not being challenged in that way, how will you ever like truly know that is what you're supposed to do because you have to be challenged to make that decision. Wow. So to like yeah. embrace the challenge um, and to enjoy it and to like find declaration of, you know, what you want to do within it. Right. Yeah. I think that's great advice. And I think you said it very well that again, some, uh, I think a lot of times students hesitate because something's going to be a challenge and you know, mm -hmm. you've seen that, hey, the challenge, that's that's where the value is. Yeah, so. I mean, my, my first year of college, I struggled. I thought it was so tough, and I was ready to transfer. I was ready to drop pre-med. I thought maybe I would be, like, a chemistry teacher um, instead, which is also, like, a terrific career, and you get to impact so many lives, but that wasn't the path that I should have taken, and it took, like, really embracing that challenge and like deciding I'm going to go through it and I'm going to get to the other side, like, because it was worth it to me to do it, um, which I almost didn't do. Right. Well, and again, I, I tell students, we all have a purpose and it's cool that you have uh, identified yours and are pursuing that and finding some great experiences and uh, some opportunities in that. So Sarah, I really appreciate you joining us and wish you luck as you continue down your career path and hope that, um, that yeah, you're, hopefully these five years go quickly, but not too quickly, uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, that you get everything you need. And I know that you will make an outstanding surgeon in the future. No, oh, thank you so much. And just thank you for having me on this. And like, I have so much advice to give. So if anyone wants to reach out and like, you know, personally have those conversations, I'd be more than willing to uh, take that time to spend with them. Perfect. Thank you very much. Take care. Of course. You too. Thank you for watching and listening to this episode of the Joust About Careers podcast. I hope you learned valuable information from this career story. And to be sure you don't miss upcoming episodes, please click subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform so you'll know when the next episode is released. Thank you for watching. And as always, this is the place to go to learn just about careers.